today after more than 50 votes in Congress to repeal or weaken this law, after a presidential election based in part on preserving or repealing this law, after multiple challenges to this law before the Supreme Court, the Affordable Care Act is here to stay. President Obama took his victory lap when the Supreme Court handed him a decided victory on the Affordable Health Care Act. He and his supporters, all smiles, taking every chance they could to hammer away at opponents about how Obamacare is here to stay. It's easy to cover these press conferences and celebrations, but what's tougher is to dive into how lives are changed by the new national health care system, and not for the better. From Greensboro, North Carolina, Charlie Liebert is an adjunct instructor at Davidson College Community College, a teacher for more than 30 years. And from Sparta, Tennessee, Elizabeth Honecker is an instructor at Motlow State Community Colleges. And what they have in common is that dark side of Obamacare, the one that means people lose their jobs and their health care. I want to thank you both for being here today. And Charlie, I'm going to go ahead and begin with you, if you don't mind, because health care, everybody wants it. Everybody needs it at your college. Did you fear, knowing that Obamacare was coming in, that you would lose your job, or was it a complete surprise, or at least have your hours cut? It was a, it was a complete surprise. I did not expect it at all. Because I have coverage from Medicare, and because I work for, for a pharmaceutical company, I have uh, life coverage in secondary. So I don't need health insurance. I need anyone to buy it for me. I have it at this point, and I pay part, part of this premium for it. So when they came at... We'll, uh, we have to cut your hours back and cut your income to 40% by taking from seven to four courses. I was shocked. I said, well, can I do waive it? Can I, can I say, I don't need insurance. Don't buy it. Let me work more. And they said, no, the IRS ruled I could, they could not. When they told you that your coverage, your income, 40% that cut and you were going to lose your insurance, you had to be frightened because everybody needs and wants that, that fallback, that insurance. Well, I have the insurance. I, what I wanted to do was waive the, the Obamacare requirement. Right. But when you got to that point, did you have any fear about your future with regard to your health insurance? Not really. I, 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 the, the big deal was the income, the, right. the loss in income. But they did it specifically to make a point about health insurance income as well. Elizabeth, let me ask you this. When you found out, how shocked were you? Oh, I, I nearly fell through the floor. Because I'd worked so hard, I've, I've worked there for over six years, and I said to myself, what's going on? I have proved myself. I am a good instructor. And to be told that a rule now cut off, in my case, 25% of my um, income uh, for no reason, I said the same thing as Charlie. I said, uh, can I waive the requirement? I don't need health care. My husband has excellent coverage, even though he's retired, and I, uh, I hardly visit the doctor. So, I mean, there was no problem. And the answer was, no, it is the rule. And I said, oh, okay. The other thing that, that uh, was almost delivered to me simultaneously was that how fair this was. And that really, it was uh, more fair that uh, Obamacare cut my hours. And I went, fair? Uh, did you study logic? <laughs> well, there's the other side of things. As you just said, too, you didn't, health insurance wasn't really a problem here, but they're taking money out of your mouth in order to make this fit. That's not what this was supposed to be about. Exactly. I have uh, done the calculations, and I have also uh, 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 figured out that not only is my compensation cut, as Charlie puts it, compensation, but um, the, the whole uh, rigor, rigor, sorry, of academic instruction is being affected because people like Charlie and myself who have a more than a few days and weeks and months into this kind of profession are not a dime a dozen. They are, as soon as they delivered that message to me, they sent out an email that said, we need more adjuncts. And I said, are you crazy? I'm going to suggest another adjunct to take the 25 percent away that you just took not on your life charlie when you get to this point and you have to sit there and be told by your employer and i imagine you were pretty happy where you worked that you were going to have your money cut simply because of the government did you think immediately and, and did you ask was it the college's decision were they forced by the government what exactly led to this the, the explanation i got from the college was that they had no choice they could not waive me, waive the insurance, and allow me to continue working the hours 
because the state of North Carolina is not going to buy me insurance when I already have insurance. So they locked you in and said, that's it. End of story, Charlie. It's too bad. Walk away. Well, actually, they went to the IRS and asked the question. Said, you know, could he waive it? And the answer was, no, you cannot. You must buy redundant insurance. What is it, Elizabeth, that the American people are not hearing from people such as you and Charlie with regard to Obamacare? We hear the president taking victory laps and telling us how wonderful it is, but what are we not hearing and paying attention to, Elizabeth? The hidden costs, not only in financial uh, uh, areas, but the hidden cost of people working fewer hours. I have friends whose hours have been cut, I, not only in, in the profession of teaching, but in retail, whose hours have been cut. Um, my uh, own situation is okay. unfortunate, right. but not good. When you, say, Go when you say not good, explain just a little bit. What do you mean by that? Oh, I, I mean the fact that I want to teach more, and I can't. And, and the compensation is all tied up with this fictional business of I need health care, which I don't need. So, Charlie, what would you suggest then? What would you tell the government, the Obama administration, the Republicans, whomever, what they need to do to make the ACA more universally beneficial for everybody? Well, the first thing I would say is repeal it. But if yep. that's not going to work, <laughs> yep. then I'd say what they should do is remove the employer mandate. And make it yep. something simple like every hour you work, you get a certain portion of your health care deposited in the account for you. If we're going to have universal yes. health care, that's a simple way to do it. But the cutoff of 30 hours is really what kills us. Elizabeth, yes. do you just feel as if you're being punished? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm being punished by a headless monster. It's not my administrator's fault. It's not even the Tennessee Board of Regents' fault. It is this nameless monster called the Affordable Care Act, which is not affordable, and it, it's cutting me off at the knees in something I love to do. You both sit here as Republicans, and as you told me, Elizabeth, you're more of a centrist than anything else, but you are still a registered Republican. And I would imagine that both of you watch very carefully what's coming up for 2016 and all these various candidates who are out there wanting your vote right now. Charlie, I'll start with you. i got about a minute left or so. All these candidates sitting there, would you tell them, enough with the foreign policy, enough with all this. Look, you got to get this settled first of all because these are our lives here that are being yeah. screwed by this administration. And if you don't do something, it's not going to get better for anybody. Charlie, is that the first thing you tell them? Uh, what I would tell them is repeal. Please, repeal. Yes. If you can't repeal, at least fix it. But would you tell them that this is the most important thing? As far as you're concerned, everything else is, is one part of this, is what they all promise. But this is the one they, thing they have to get down right, correct? This is the one thing that affects me personally, directly, and hurts me. So, yeah, it's the most important thing in, in my uh, political views, certainly. El Elizabeth, let me ask you, is there anybody sitting out there in the GOP field you think can get this done for you? My husband and I talk about this all the time. <laughs> uh, can I just say that I like Trump's uh, attitude? Come on, let's get it done. That's, that's where I am right now. I don't know if I'm going to vote for him. I don't know who is going to emerge when the dust clears. But I'm telling you right now that Trump, you know, he says, come on, let's get jobs done. I'm sure and that the Donald's going to be happy to hear that. And you may even have a <laughs> hotel room in your, in your name waiting for you in New York City. Listen, we'll stay in touch with you both. I think that this is horrible that uh, as teachers, we need good teachers anyway. Elizabeth Amen. Honaker and Charlie Liebert, thank you so much for joining us. We will stay in touch. Follow this out. Good luck. And let's hope somebody makes better of this mess. Take care and thank have a great you. Fourth of July. Stay with us. Thank Midpoint will continue.